Hi guys, in today's video I'll be answering the year 2021 grade 12 mathematics paper 1 trial exam. I will start with question 1. By the way, um, this is the information that you might need if you want to download the paper, but then I'm also going to leave a PDF that you can download below this video. So let's begin. Before we begin, let me first show you the questions that we're going to be doing. We're going to start with question 1 uh, until question 1.1.4. 1. 1. Uh, we're going to, might, we might end here, but it will depend on time. So let's start. I've already written the question, so everything is going to be easy. Okay, now let's look at question 1, 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Here we are asked to solve for x. Remember, in the question, we are solving for x. Just to make that clear. Okay, here 4x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. What you do here is you put uh, 25 to the right, and the sign changes from negative to positive, and then you divide by 4 on both sides. Divide by 4 on both sides. 4s will cancel each other, so you'll have x squared is equal to 25 over 4. That means x is going to be equal to plus minus 25 over 4. Remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you're going to have something like this. As a result, your answer will be plus minus 5 over 2. Remember, you need that, that positive and a negative there because this is a quadratic um, the, this equation resembles a quadratic um, equa equation or general expression and it takes this form when, read, when drawn. Uh, this will be the turning point, so it's going to be there. And negative 5 over 2 and positive 5 over 2 will be these two points here. You don't need to draw because you're asked to solve, but I'm just showing you the reasoning behind as to why we have two positive um, possible values that we can get. So make sure that you have your plus and minus sign whenever you write the answer, or you're going to lose marks. <clears throat> let's go to 1.1.2. Here, let's rearrange this. Take 4 to this side, to the left, and equate this to 0. Um, in this question, with experience, with experience, you will realize that um, the trial and error method won't work, and therefore you can make use of the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Remember, the coefficient of x squared is a, the coefficient of x is b, and this last term here is c. So you will substitute your values such that you have um, here in, in place of b you have 5. Okay, let me do this because I won't be able to have space. So that so everyone knows this formula, so I'm just going to substitute. Okay, so you're going to have x is equal to negative 5 plus minus. There's b squared here. So 5 squared minus 4a. In the place of a, of course, we have, <coughs> we have 3. And c is negative 4. And then we're going to divide all of this by 2a. If, if you punch this on your calculator with a plus here, you're going to get a value. And then you punch this again on your calculator with a negative here, you're going to get another value. Those two values that you're going to get will be x is equal to um, negative 2.26. Let me write the other one here. X is equal to 0 0.59.
I will make a video where I'll be explaining how to use the quadratic formula for those who don't know how. Now let's go to 1.1.3. On this question, usually if you have a 2 to the power 2x, for example, a 2 to the power 2x, you should expect to you should expect to be required to use um, some trick whereby you, you you say k is you let k be equal to something but then in this case we have 2 to the power x x has no coefficient in it so usually if i don't see any coefficient of x here i know that the question is going to be easy so i just take out the, the the common factor between these two expressions between 2x and 5 multiplied by 2x plus 1 but first i'm just going to write it out so that you can see these two factors that I'm talking about. So if you look at this side, we have 2 to the power x, and then if you look at this side, we have 2 to the power x as well. So we can take out 2 to the power x. 2 to the power x goes there once. 2 to the power x goes here once, but then it cancels with 2 to the power x so that we are left with 5 times 2 to the power 1. That's going to be equal to negative 1. 44. Now, this is 5 times 2, so this is 10. So 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So this is going to be equal to negative 144 again. Now we're going to divide by negative 9 because we want to have 2 to the power x alone so that we can solve for the value of x. As a result, as a result, we're going to have 2 to the power x is equal to, when you punch this on your calculator, it's going to give you 16. And for those who don't like using a calculator, you could say that because this is a negative and this is a negative, um, they cancel out and we have a positive. And 12 is the same as, uh, I mean, 144 is the same as 12. That's what I wanted to say. Um, so that's 12 to the power 2. Yes, yeah, the same as 12 to the power 2. And 9 is the same as... 3 to the power 2, right? So that means you have 12 over 3 to the power 2. Using the laws of exponents, this is um, permitted. So how many 3s go into 12? 3s go into 12 4 times. 4 times 2, 4 to the power 2 is the same as 4 times 4, and that's going to be equal to 16. I was just showing you how you could do it without a calculator, but then I don't think um that would be required of you in a normal exam examination okay now we have 2 to the power 16 we know that 2 uh 16 16 is equal to 2 to the power 4 so we have x because the bases are the same the exponents of the indexes are equal so x is equal to 4 that's how we would solve this one now let's go to this question here here we're given inequalities and many people tend to struggle with inequalities but they are actually easy you just need to understand the work first of all i hope everyone can see that this resembles the the, the expression or the quadrat uh, the quadratic expression ax squared plus bx plus c where a is this number here b is this coefficient one it's not written but we know it's one and c is this negative three here so everyone can see that because this expression resembles a quadratic expression we know that in some way it represents a graph so for us to answer this question we've got to draw something so what we're going to have is this and because a is equal to 2 a is equal to 2 is greater than 0 right so a is equal to 2, we know that a is equal to 2 is greater than 0 because it's positive. That is the same, um, I mean, that means we have a smiling function. I discussed this on, um, on one of the videos, you can check it. I think it's part 1 of the quadratic function videos. So it's going to look something like this. This uh, construction or diagram 
is something that you need to draw whenever you're answering the inequality question because it, it, it has marks in the exam. So these two values here uh, also need to be written. So how do you get these values? These values are just the roots. So for you to get the roots, you just you need to um, factorize this. So we're going to have 2x squared minus plus 3 plus x minus 3. We know that 2x squared is the same as 2x multiplied by x. We know that negative 3 is the same as 3 times 1. There's a negative here, of course. 2x times 1 is 2x. x times 3 is 3x. But then when we add these two numbers here, they should give us the middle term and it should be positive. What can we do here so that we get a positive middle term? We can put a negative on 2. As a result, negative 2x plus 3x is going to give us x. Now, if this is negative 2x, where does negative where does the negative come from? We compensate for the negative by assigning it here on negative 1 because 2x times by negative 1 is going to be negative 2x. We always put the signs on this side. If 3 was negative, we would put a negative there. Okay, so... Because 3 is a positive there, we're going to put a positive number there. And then this is this will be our first expression, 2x plus 3. And this will be our second expression, x minus 1. As a, let's equate them to 0 because we just want to know these values here. So x as a result is going to be equal to negative 3 over 2. Or x is going to be equal to 1. So we're going to have th negative 3 over 2 on this side, we're going to have 1 on this side. We can't have 1 on this side and negative 2 over 2 on this side because the number line counts from 0 to the positives and it counts from 0 to the negatives. <coughs> now, let me erase this one. Okay. A function is positive on this side here and it's negative here. So this function, we want to know the values of x where this function is greater than 0. Here on this side, the function is greater than 0. So we need to find the regions of the function where the function is greater than zero. So these are it's it's these regions here. This part here and this part here. In other words, as you go to negative infinity on this side, um, the values that you're going to be getting for the graph are those which will satisfy this. Therefore, what we have here is x is less than negative three over two. For all values of x. That are less than negative 3 over 2 the function will always be positive it will always be greater than 0 and on this side again for all the values of x i'm um, going to positive infinity the function will always be on top of the function or, or, or will be on top of the x-axis and therefore it, it, it satisfies this equation again so that's all x will always be greater than y if you have any questions that you uh that you want to ask and if you have anything that you're not particularly clear with on this um, exercise or on my solutions you can um, t you can ask in the comment section otherwise this is the end of the video um, don't forget to like comment uh, what you think about the video subscribe hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted whenever a new video is available um, by the way uh, I'm gonna continue with question 1.2.1 on part 2 the next video which will appear now on the screen yes it's exactly that video uh yeah take care